Welcome to Milk and Mommy's podcast. This podcast was created simply because I found myself happily pregnant and self-employed and wondering, how was I going to juggle it all? Get comfy as we talk all things motherhood, working for yourself and finding that elusive balance, honestly. Oh, hello. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> you're out there, darling, you okay? I have no fucking idea what you're doing. <laughs> Just looking at you like, how did you learn this stuff? Dude, music class. Music in general. I went to the same music class as you. Dude, well, we did, like, I was concentrating on singing, right? So I'm in stu- I was in the studio a lot of the time. Fair so enough. music class, studio, other friends who have studios. Um, and then also, uh, whatchamacallit, gigs. It's I like work a as whole, a professional singer. whole new world for there me. I love it. And there we go. And also, Max, my partner, Max is also, like, a tech guy. So he also knows how to set up studios and recording sessions and this and the other. So... It's just all part of the the circle and then also work. So welcome. I feel very out of the loop. <laughs> I've got no idea But what's the thing going is, on. you're never going to need to know this. Like, you well, never. I might do. And then I will teach you. All right, fine. You're fair welcome. enough. Fair so, enough. Uh, hi, guys. Welcome to another episode of Milk and Mummies. Um, I'm here with a guest. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell that we know each other too well. Um, you want to tell us who you are and what you do, darling? Oh. Who are you? Hello, everyone. <laughs> a little bit nervous. No, Don't hi. Be nervous. Uh, I'm Amber. I am one of Rachel's very long term friends. Hi. hi. Known each other for what? 25? Yo. Yeah. 28 years? No. Approaching. Hold on, I don't even know. Yeah, but it's getting to that. Like 27 years, I think. Yeah, that's wild. Well, that is a long time, man. Yeah. And we're still friends. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Sister from Love and Mister, Absolutely. basically. Absolutely. So, uh, so yeah, so I'm Amber. Um, so, first I, of all, rookie mistake. Why have I got the fan still on and I'm recording? That's just shocking behaviour. Oh, my God. So, keep going. Tell us who you are. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Known Rachel for, like, most of my life. Um, I am also a fellow mother. Um, whoop, whoop. Yep, yep. Got two baby girls. And in terms of what I do, mm-hmm. I am st- just launching my online business. Woo! Yeah, very exciting. <laughs> very, very exciting. Should I do a little plug for my business? Absolutely. Or? Okay. Absolutely. So it's uh, an online marketplace um, targeted to all the South Asian community uh, where you're able to buy, sell and hire South mm. Asian clothing, jewellery mm. and accessories for men, women and children. Amazing. I didn't realise you're doing men's wear as mm-hmm. well. Yeah, okay. absolutely. And children's wear yeah. because these kids are not going to wear this. <laughs> yeah, you, we all know how quickly they grow. There you go. It's I'm outrageous. learning that for sure. It's outrageous. Yeah. So yeah, so um, working on that at the moment and getting ready to launch in the next few months. Do you have a launch date or not yet? I don't. I don't, I, I don't believe in sort of hard dates when it comes to this, especially... Okay. Well, I do believe in hard dates because you should have, you know, a rough idea of when you want to get it done. Yeah. But life just gets in the way. Life and is it lifing. Is, it is it's mental. Mm. So I had like a, a date of October and then due to like circumstances that, that got pushed back. Yeah. So I think it's good to have sort of like a rough date. So I'm giving myself sort of towards the end of the year. I want okay. my website up and running. Everything good to go. Yeah. Going to be doing like a soft launch. I've got my marketing plan. Got everything kind of yeah. going with it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah. All right. Can I just before we before we start? Yeah, go on. that's why I was asking about the rules. Oh, go on. Because yeah. I'm very excited. Yeah. For this, for this podcast. Okay. So I've bought some treats. Oh, did ya? Yes. Oh, what did you bring? I'm, I'm sorry, hearing the so rustling of the bag. Sorry about the bag. No, I'm excited. Voice. Don't you worry about that. So I'm definitely a presents person. Although presents aren't my love language. <gasps> she got me some prosecco. One for you. Prosecco is like. One for me. Fantastic. I didn't know how you were feeling about the time of the day. So I did get some orange juice as well. Oh, to make a mimosa. To make a mimosa. That's very thoughtful. I will take it either way, mimosary or just straight alcoholy. And then obviously you can't have like drinks without a bit of chocolate as well. <laughs> so it's to celebrate the podcast. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. This, this is so hence amazing. the reason for the, uh, can I open these? Yes, you can. Thank you. Oh, this is so amazing. So I thought let's just get, let's get it going, man. That's so dope. Do you know what? I was going to, um, so guys, basically this is the I'm first nervous. week. <laughs> Don't, <be nervous. laughs> Don't get the equipment wet. I know, I know. I'm <laughs> nervous. This is actually the first week uh, of me recording and filming all things podcast in um my chosen home in the studio so this has been like a super hectic busy incredible week because it's also the longest stretch of time that i've actually been away from um baby as well so that's been really weird like 
I'm away for work for X amount of hours. That's been so strange. Does it feel good though? <laughs> no, no, do you know what? I don't, I don't know. Sorry, yes. Yes, it does. Because like, oh yeah, this is like life. This is what I've, I've been doing pre-baby. Like I'm here for studio or I'm here on uh, on a gig or I'm here on, on set. So that's like, it's weird to have the old life in with the new and me trying to find that balance. Very strange. So I was going to toast myself at the end of the week. Um, I've actually got a play on at the end of this week that I haven't really told anybody about because I haven't been on stage in a hot minute. So that's exciting. I know I'm 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 excited, a bit nervous, but excited. Um, all the emotions. So I think on Saturday I was going to have whatever treat that I could have that was going to be ridiculous. I was going to do that. Mate, it's always a treat when it's with me. So I'm just like I'm buzzing for this. This is dope. Well, I thought you know what. We haven't seen each other for a while. Yeah, it's been a hot minute, actually. Isn't it? Yeah, so, yeah. let's just go oh. chillax. Do you want some juice in it? How much space is there for juice? Well, yeah, you can have a little <laughs> bit. Right, let's just, have, let's just have half like this then. Come on then. And then, uh, and then the other half, we'll have a little bit of juice. Cheers, oh, babe. I was going to say cheers. Love you. Love you. It's very Thank exciting. You. You're this most welcome. So awesome. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to take my, a sip of my, my oh. Prosecco. Because we deserve it. <laughs> mm. Yums. Thank you. You're most welcome. Um, oh, what a lovely way to start the session. I'm so happy. Well, I thought I was going to be your first guest. The way... I originally, I think I was going to be, yeah, right? Yeah, you were. That's but how it was set Yeah. Up. So I'd already planned this in my head that yeah. I was going to do this, yeah. right? But then I thought... Oh, yeah, shit. Life, 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 life. Literally, that's what it is. And I have to say, the experience of this thus far, because obviously I'm speaking to mums people with kids so i'm fully aware that things are just gonna have to be in flux in some way shape or form because that really yeah. is just what like that is the new new you know what I mean? but yeah so you have told us a bit about you and what it is that you're doing now mm -hmm. um what were you doing what were you about before motherhood <laughs> oh my god I <laughs> but what was that like i can't even remember <laughs> I'm like two kids deep. <laughs> yeah, you are, I feel you like are. I need to put a disclaimer in here as well, right? Why? Because um, the first thing I need to say is I absolutely fucking love my kids. Of course. Okay, right. So I just want to like, because if I start cussing them and stuff and <laughs> I'm not cussing them, <laughs> right? But uh, like, motherhood is fucking hard. Yes, it right? is. So two things. Number one, I adore my kids. The motherhood is like the best thing that's ever happened to me in life, right? Yeah. Yeah. Literally the best oh, thing that's ever, that. ever, everything that's happened to me. Uh -huh. like, I thought getting married and being with my husband was like just next level and it made me but motherhood is like it's 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 wild i absolutely adore it but yeah i'm really open and honest about you know how 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 much of a fuckery it is sometimes i mean um but this is also the point of the pod like, yeah d i just want everything from as honest a perspective as possible. <laughs> just because there's so much that happens with motherhood or just child rearing or getting pregnant or breastfeeding mm -hmm. blah 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 whatever else and people just don't want to be as transparent i don't know if they're afraid to tell you the truth or it might yeah. pick you off or they may not have the i don't know the the language or the dialogue to get it out yeah so this was created partly to make sure we're just honest about some shit because <gasps> it's hella real right now 100 percent. i think all the shit that you see on like instagram yes. right like you know the perfect house the perfect mom like you're looking amazing your kids are looking amazing your yeah. house is fucking clean that is bullshit there and i'm go. i think one of the things like throughout like i know that's not the question that you asked me so no, but i think throughout you know my journey of motherhood and stuff yeah you know that can really get to you that you know seeing those images mm. and like you know reading people's posts yeah and stuff and seeing how you know they've I, in you know in air quotes they've got it together yeah makes you feel like a bit of a bit of a wank parent do you know what i mean <laughs> no i get it but that's also the thing with socials right where if we step away from motherhood for for a second and go to that body image and all that kind of mm. stuff that's that's definitely a, a conversation or, or a debate where it's like well our young kids girls boys are looking at these people and these images and feeling certain pressures on themselves yeah. that they have to look a certain way but the funny thing with all of that is i think people always forget if you think about it how many pictures do you take before you post that one picture? In it. Like a gajillion. So it's like... we. Also, all how look... do these mums find the time to take these pictures? Right, and make sure that the kids are standing appropriately, correctly, or the place stays clean for long enough, whatever else. So it's just, it's not... 
Instagram is fun. Instagram is an escape. Yeah. It's just, it's not real. We know, Absolutely. we all know the truth. Yeah. We know it took 50 images to get that one. And then if you've taken it a bit further, you might go and edit and filter whatever else your picture. So it's like, this space is just for fun. It's not real. So That's because yeah. we're rational as well then. We know those yeah. things. There are a lot of people that, 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 that might don't, not. that might not and it's don't true. feel that way. It's and true. I remember in the early days of motherhood, when I was looking at it, and I'm, I'm quite like a, you know, rational person. Mm. I, you know, I feel... You know, I was, I'd, I'd see these images and I'd feel like, yeah, like I said, a little bit of shit about myself, to be honest with you. Mm. Um, but yeah, anyway, so before, so that's the number one first disclaimer. Second one is, if you haven't noticed already, I swear a lot. <laughs> so I apologise for all the swearing. Yeah, yeah I swear a lot. Yeah, no, I do. So, <laughs> so um, I am sorry about uh, all of the swear words. But again, nice. I'm, I'm just going to keep it, keep it as real as I can. Yeah, sorry, swear words are just necessary sometimes you just got to swear like a pirate yeah, and that yeah. is just what it is yep, yep, i yep. can't even lie to you um so you still haven't told us what you did before motherhood yeah. what was life like what just just you know what it is i guess it's more what were you like what did you do how did you carry yourself what was your day structured like and just just what was your just what was it what was it like i mean I've always been very kind of determined, I think, and very career orientated and very motivated. So yeah. a lot of my life before motherhood was um, very focused on my career, you yeah. know, making money. So like working hard so I can play harder, yeah. basically. And that, that you know, that's me me and my fellows like kind of policy and, you know, motto in life. And, mm. you know, and, that, and, and we did that. So there were a lot of like, you know, a lot of dinners, a lot of like, you know, going out together, a lot of like having fun, you know, doing things on a whim, um, n you know, planning things, but not really planning things j and just putting ourselves, ourselves first. I get it. You know, yeah, and, and yeah. just not having to not, you know, being responsible because, you know, we, we obviously we bought our house, mm. you know, so there was, there's a level of responsibility. So you, we grew up. Yeah. We, we were growing up. Yeah. But. But it's just, just the two of you, right? Just the two of You're us, just and just for yourself and you fine, know. Maybe. And it was, I mean, I life before kids mm. was was fucking epic. <laughs> you know, it was. And I'm not saying life yeah, after kids isn't. Even, but, but I'm not. But it. But you know, it was just. It was. There was responsibility, but there's not responsibility, if I that makes you. sense. No, it makes perfect sense. I get it. You know, Completely. so if we wanted to, you know, decide on, you know, six o'clock on Saturday night, oh, fuck it, should we go out? Yeah, you could. Yeah, let's fuck it, let's just go yeah. out. Let's get ready and go out, innit? Yeah, yeah. You know, and should we stay, oh, should we go to the casino after with yeah. like, like 4 a.m. in the morning? Yeah, go on in, let's go to the casino. Let's lay in bed all, mm. of, oh my God, mm. let's lay in bed all of Sunday. You know, let's like. Oh just, my goodness! You know, do stay in our like night suits, our pajamas or whatever, and just just eat in bed and just drink our coffee in bed and like do fucking I love, nothing. Love that you said that. The one thing I'm really missing is just lying in bed with my partner. I hate getting up. Just that nothing. <laughs> I hate getting up. Just like nothing. Just nothingness in bed. Oh, it's raining outside. Just pull the duvet up. Should we watch a film? Like just just that nothingness. Yeah. I miss that so much. You know what I miss? <gasps> what? Binge watching. Uninterrupted binge watching, yeah. You know how long it takes me <laughs> to get through a series now? Oh my God. <laughs> I'm sick of it. Yeah, I'm so sick and tired of it because in the <sighs> evenings now I work because that's the only yeah. time that I get to work. Mm -hmm. So I'm quite strict with my time. Like after I put the girls down, yeah. I try and then, you know, work for about an hour and a half. But by nine o'clock, nine, nine fifteen, mm. I'm like, what? what? I need to go spend some time with my fella. Yeah, <laughs> Do you no, know what I mean? It. Because you're still a wife as well. Yeah. So, you, you know, know so for you, um, are your babies quite good at going down, like downtime? For you well, to as, know, as in to sleep, as in go yeah, to bed. For you to know this yeah. is your working time. Yeah, 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 hundred percent, hundred percent. Like you know, we've we're really we've been really strict with the routine. Okay. Um, so sort of like by eight o'clock, you know, nice. they're down. We've showered. Like you know, I'm 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 working at that point. That's do you so know what good. I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I get so pissed off <laughs> if they don't go down. Or if one of them's... And because I feel like my shift is over for the day. Okay, I get you. So I'm like, babe, your shift has started. I'm done. Yeah. He's been working all day. He's, he's had a nice relaxing day at work. <laughs> he's, had, he's had a nice relaxing day at work. But do you know what's funny is I completely get that. Yeah. And it's like, but you actually have. Yeah, isn't it? It's a, I know it's a different kind of pressure and different kind of deadlines that... Um, sorry, if your partner is also in a, in a corporate space. Yes, it's a different kind of pressure, different kind of work. But... It's relatively relaxing compared to chasing kids, trying to make sure that they're eating, trying to make sure you change your nappy, trying to make sure you do this and that. So 
Yeah. He doesn't get spocked in the face on a regular basis yeah, like I'll me. Yeah, in the face. In it. Um, my little one's just really gotten into drumming, and one of her um, <laughs> uncles and aunties has got her like a little who did that drum case. Uh, that? Shout out to Polly and Eman. I absolutely love it. Sorry, it is so amazing watching her yeah. get so excited that yeah. she's making these sounds and yeah. she loves to dance. Yeah. But have I been hit in the face with a little like um, <laughs> little stick a few times? I have, and it's a stick with like a little round. It's like a xylophone. There you go. Thank you. What like the yeah, xylophone? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, I should know this. I'm a musician. Uh, xylophone. Oh my god, sticks. Great. <laughs> have I been hit in the face? Yes, yes, yeah. I have. And they hurt. Yes, they do. And I can't be mad at you because it wasn't intentional. You didn't realize what you were doing. You were in the moment. So I've just, I've just got to ride with that. No, I think my like, kids yeah, know. That, I think my kids know it hurts. Yeah. They just keep on doing it. They're Aww, savage. Okay, so yeah, it, yeah, life before kids was um, just was if if if, if I can fancy free. Yeah, if I can describe it, it's just being able to just get up and get out. Yeah, <laughs> very quickly yeah. and easily. <laughs> yeah. Did you um, did you always know you wanted to be a mum? That's a hard one, actually. Yeah. Right. It's so funny because I know the answers to like all of this anyway. But yeah, is... so I've always been very maternal. I've got lots yes. of nieces and nephews and I've absolutely adored them. I've had like nieces and nephews since I was like 18. Mm, yeah. You know, oh my gosh, yeah. So, so, so my oldest nephew's going to be 20 next year. Yeah. Right. Oh, shit, I've just said my age. Anyway, it doesn't matter. No, no, right. one, no one knows. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look at that, all right? <laughs> Nobody do the maths. I never talk about my age. Oh my gosh, sorry, man. The whole thing. Sorry, no, no, sorry, no. Man. no. That's just like a. Ugh, anyway. I'm trying to grow old gracefully. I don't know if it's, it's taking No, we're never going to grow old gracefully, let's be honest. Anyway, he was yeah. saying. So, um, <laughs> so, so, yeah, you know, I've, I, have, I have always been maternal. Like, I like, you know, I'm, I'm good around kids. Mm. I think that I had a period kind of in between, sort of after uni and like before. I'm I'm I met my bloke that you know what I don't know yeah because I'm so focused on my that. career yeah and and you know I don't know if I was cut out for the you know just how how tough it is yeah. even though you don't know how tough it is until you do it 100% right? I agree with that but I don't know whether I was too selfish to be honest with you to do it and that's also do you know okay. what I mean and it was yeah. I remember us having those conversations from time to time and to me it was it was nuts because you are so maternal mm. and you are so great with kids. Mm. Like it's it's in your blood, it's in your home, it's yeah. how you were raised, I think, is also your friends and people around you who had kids, all that kind of stuff. You were so, so good with that. Yeah. So when I would hear you kind of like, you know what, Rach, I don't know. Yeah. Fair enough if that's where you were gonna go. Yeah. If you didn't want to have kids, you didn't want, you didn't want to have kids. But it was like, I can't, I, I couldn't understand. I was like, it's just, yeah. it's so you. How is yeah. that possible? So that was such a, that was such an interesting time because you were pretty like, Either really on the fence or just like, mm, I don't know, maybe if my partner wants kids, then maybe, but it was still very much a, mm -mm, I remember having a conversation with, 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 with my fellow when we were on, it was our first year anniversary, we went to Mexico. Yeah. And I remember saying to him, like someone, someone asked me, mm. um, oh, when you're having kids. Yeah. Right. <laughs> your standard of question, course. like yeah. the day after you get married, oh, you get a bit on it. Yeah. Um, yep. And so they asked me and I was like, oh, you know what? I don't really know if I do. Mm. And that night I remember he said to me, he was like, babe, I really need you to like pack it in. Oh, really? <laughs> he was like, I really need you. He was, he was like, you know, it does. Yeah. And he's not, he's not like a kind of overly emotional kind of guy. Yeah. He just, and he's, he's let me be however I want to be in life. Right. Yeah. Um, but he said like, it does, it gets to me when you, when you say that. Mm. So are you being serious when you're saying this? Yeah. And he actually, he was having a serious conversation with me. Okay. He doesn't really have a lot of serious yeah, conversations he's with me. he's super chill. He's so chill, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah, He just lets me, like, just, 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 be. just be and, Which like, talk shit. Which is amazing, yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, but he said to me, he's like, are you actually being serious with this? Mm. And I said, like, oh, no. All right. You're right. Maybe yeah. it's, like, a coping thing. I don't know. Maybe okay. it's just, yeah, of course, I want, I, I want your kids. I want your children. Yeah. You know, and then... But then we waited a while. Yeah. You know, we did wait and we were trying for a while. Yeah. You know, and we done, I think, well, I got pregnant after, like four years after. Okay. Uh, so four years after you got married. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 That's sort of a nice, I, it feels like that's quite a nice chunk of time just for you guys just to 100%. be you together. But it felt long then, though. Yeah. Because we were trying and stuff mm. as well. It did feel long. Yeah. And I think the more we were trying, yeah. the more I wanted it. Okay. Do you know what I mean? I realised, like, actually, I really want this, you yeah. know. Like, we got the house. Yeah. We were settled. 
I was like, right, there's something missing now. There okay. is something missing. Oh, wow. Okay, you've you know? never said that before. Yeah, there was, yeah really? absolutely. And, you know, we got the dog. Yeah. Right? Do you know what I mean? Got Shout the house. Shout out to Ghost. What up, yeah, Ghost? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got the dog. I was like, I'm still not fully there. Do you know what I mean? I still need, we still need something, you know. Um, and I'm so glad we did wait as well. Because I know a lot of couples that have been together, you know, for a short time. And then they've had a kid and they haven't done all those adventures. Yes. You know, we did the big things together. Yeah. We really embraced those big things. We went on some sick holidays, man. Mm. Like, we spent a lot of money on holidays and, like, pissing around. Yeah. And whatever. And I'm so glad we've done that. Because now that we've got the kids, mm. right, and we look back and we just think that, Oh God, imagine if we didn't do that. We'd, we'd probably flip and kill, kill one another. <laughs> because you look back at those things. Yeah. You know, and, and and you look back at pictures and you think, oh yeah, you know, actually I really do love him. Or like, yeah. oh, yeah, she really does love me. Or like, yeah. you know, we are actually really good together. Yeah. And also just, I guess, having the freedom just to be. The freedom just to explore. The freedom to get to know each other as well. 100%. Pre, obviously, yes, you, you were together as a couple. Fantastic. You know him that way. You get married. I know for some people, there's absolutely no shift in getting married at all. Like, nothing's changed for them. For some yeah. people, I hear that some things mm. do kind of feel a bit different because you yeah. are married. So now you're getting to know your partner in that space. Yeah. And then... Now you're gonna get to know your partner as a dad or a mom. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I I I understand the desire to if you're somebody who does choose to have a bit of a, a wait before baby come baby comes, sorry. Um I understand how and why that is. Yeah. So yeah, it's quite it's quite nice that you have that. I'm j- yeah, I'm just really glad that we've done that. Yeah. Um what was your journey like? Obviously you've got two little ones. Mm. Um what was your journey like with I guess getting pregnant, falling pregnant, and then motherhood. Just what, whatever you want to share. What, yeah. what was that journey like with for you? I think getting pregnant. Mm. Um, I wasn't as knowledgeable about my own body, and in terms of things like cycles yeah. and things like that, yeah. and knowing that you know you're only really fertile on two, like you know, high fertility on two days. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you just like you know you, you, like. A week before your period, you know, yeah. you, you know, you have sex, you're not going to get pregnant. Yeah. Because that's not how it works. And it's so mad because you're not the first person to say that. So many people find themselves in that exact position. Yeah. It's just so stunning to me how little we are taught, how little we know. We're, we're told and we're taught so much on how not to get pregnant. Don't do it, don't do it, don't do yeah, it. Yeah, but when yeah. it actually comes to that shift, yeah, you don't realize, oh, this is a brand new space that I've got yeah, to learn. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, I've got yeah. to figure out and I've got to understand and get to know my body better. And there's so many things you've got to Mad. take into consideration. Like you got to, th- you know, you got to think about what you're eating. Yeah. You know, your, you know, you how you're exercising, mm-hmm. your health, your BMI, yeah, you know, yeah. all of this kind of yeah. stuff. Because it not only impacts, you know, you before you get pregnant, mm-hmm. getting pregnant, but also your pregnancy as well. Yep. Like. Uh, I had like an extremely high BMI on my second pregnancy. Okay. And I was classed as overweight. What a oh, piss take. Beautiful. Right. Great. Thanks, guys. And I was like, well, that, that's just not the truth. <laughs> <laughs> but but these are things that matter, you know, yeah. and these things things are really important. You're absolutely right. You, you, you're not taught these things. Nope. And, you know, um, trying to get pregnant on average takes two years. Yeah. Okay. See, you know. I didn't know that. Actually. Yeah. So like, on average, it takes sort of like, well, they say like the doctors will, will say to you, if you haven't, if you haven't had a successful, you know, pregnancy mm. after two years, mm. then you need to come in. We need to start doing tests and things okay. like that. Okay, okay. So, you know, it, I, I had started doing tests and things, okay. you know, to make sure that everything was all right, mm. you know, and everything was absolutely fine. It was, but I really think it comes down to timing. Do you know what I mean? Oh, I really yeah. think it comes down to timing. So, you know, when I was trying to get pregnant, yeah. doing the research and stuff around it, even things like, you know, what your fella should eat. So like the supplements and, you know, don't don't drink too much and don't do this and don't do that. And like, don't sit on like a, a warm seat, you know, in the car, you get like the warm seats. Mm. Don't sit on those. Uh, <laughs> like the kind of like old keep wives' those testes yeah. cool. Yeah. <laughs> nice and cool. Yeah, exactly. Like, don't burn your balls, <laughs> right? Yeah? Right? Because you need those bad oh, boys. Mate. They can't get too comfy in right? there. They've got, they got to swim. <laughs> Jeez. Um, it, it, oh, but yeah, yeah so, I, so I think it, it, was, it was, it's a whole new world, mm. you know, and, you know, even when I got pregnant, you know, um, um, my first pregnancy, mm-hmm. it was all very exciting. That's nice. You know, and it was just so over the moon getting, like, to be pregnant. And I embraced oh, yeah. everything. I was, like, uh, really bad nausea for the first 16 weeks. I was going to ask you before mm. you carry on. When you found out you were pregnant and you shared it with your partner, what was that like? I say that just because, for me, I was so, ad- like, 
we were yeah okay we're, we're trying we're kind of like we're trying but are we trying oh we're trying look if you're not using protection you're trying yeah okay 100 percent. Right? um and i spoke to my um my doctor about how it was all going and just like just as a chat that came up and how i was doing it she was like no that's she's like no don't rely on any of these apps to monitor your periods or put your information into these apps Grab yourself some ovulation sticks. Yeah. Use it every single day. That's the most accurate way in which yeah. you're going to um, know. Yeah. So I had my doctor's appointment in December. From, say, January 1st, I started with my ovulation sticks. Yeah. Um, And then by mid-February, I found out that um, I was pregnant, mm. which is crazy because we kind of had sort of loosely started in, at, say, at the end of June. Yeah. And doing what I thought I was supposed to be doing. Uh, But when I found out I was pregnant, my period hadn't come, it hadn't come, it hadn't come. I was like, oh, I'm feeling period you know, when yeah, like, you're yeah, back yeah, to the yeah, achy, yeah, yeah. achy, it's fine. But nothing had happened. Uh, and I had a whole, it was like, the, my birthday's at the end of the month. And then from then on, I've just been, I was drinking, I was out partying yes, because all the bands that I was with were doing Christmas parties or catch ups. I'm drinking, having the best time, my birthday, the best time, oh my God. And then my period still hadn't come. And my partner was like, do you know what, Rach, just go, just take a test. I was like, oh, there's no need, oh my God, on a test. Yeah. So I took the test and I was like, Max. <laughs> so I go to him and I'm like, okay, I'm pregnant. And um, I look, I'm looking at him like, I don't know, I wasn't even, I don't know what I expected him to be like. Yeah. But he was like, okay. And I was like, okay. But I was excited. I was nervous. I was scared. I was like, oh my, oh my God. Oh, mm. oh my God. Yeah. I've got to go see my mum because my mum was in London yeah. and we're on our way to go see her. And I was like, Oh shit, what now? What really now? But I've just signed to a new this. I've got a new this coming up. Really? Yeah. I'm doing it now? Okay, we okay, we're gonna go ahead with this. Are we got I had all these questions. Yeah. And I think prior to that, I kind of am, I guess I assumed finding that finding out that I'd be pregnant, I'd be like, Oh my god, I'm pregnant, baby. Oh my goodness, <laughs> like whoa. Do you mean I expected it to yeah, be yeah, some yeah, kind yeah, of like, yeah, oh yeah, my yeah, goodness? Yeah. yeah. But it was a bit like holy shit, oh my God. But yeah. like all the questions and all the emotions came through. So I didn't anticipate that at all. Yeah. So when you were like, oh shit. Okay, the, the lines are on here. I'm yeah. pregnant. How was that like for you guys? I think we had a bit, <laughs> we had a bit of a different journey, I think. Mm. And, you know, in going on the theme of being really honest and stuff. And again, it's another thing that people don't really talk about. Mm. I mean, I've spoken to you about it, mm. you know, because we were trying for a while mm. and I was acutely aware of my cycle. Mm. And so okay. when I would be late a day or a couple of days, mm. this prior to falling pregnant, I'd yeah. get a bit excited. Okay. And then it'd be like two, three days. And on certain occasions, I'd be like a week late. Yeah. And I'd think, you know, this, this is, is it, it, this is it, this mm. is it. And I'd take a test and fucking so annoying yeah yeah because you take a test because they're, they're they ain't cheap either right <laughs> so you take a test yeah and then another the thing my, no one tells you go on and then the next day my period comes or that that night my period comes i'm like what piss day why i have to take it then exactly do you know what i mean yeah um and and to be completely honest with you mm. there were a lot of months that i'd be absolutely devastated when my period came yeah, yeah. i'd sit there and i'd cry oh man i'd sit there in the toilet and i'd cry you know yeah um and and i and I think because I'd been going through that and like so silently suffering. Yeah, silently suffering. <laughs> God. Well, it's not nothing to even laugh about. It's just a it's, funny it's, thing. It's because you can laugh about it now. That's yeah. the thing in the well, moment. Fuck, this is this is some serious shit. In it, and I, and, I, and I really feel for like women, yeah. and you know, when people like, you know, say that you know, yeah, not yet, or like soon, or whatever. Like that's why I never ask anyone. Yeah, you know. Or when you're gonna have a baby because mm. you don't know what that person's going through. Yeah, that's you true. You don't know whether they are trying really hard or they've just had a miscarriage mm. or they've decided to have a termination because it's not the right thing for them. Mm -mm -mm. You know? Yeah. You don't know what people are going through. So, so that's why I never really ask anyone. Yeah. Because that's your shit. That's your business. Yeah. Right. And I remember what it felt like every fucking month sat there on the toilet. And then also having to tell my husband, mm. having to tell him, like, oh, I just started my period. And then seeing that that little glimpse of disappointment in his eyes as well. Oh, and again, because he's such a strong man, mm. you know, and he's very very alpha male, he doesn't show his emotions, yeah. all that kind of shit. And just seeing that felt like I was letting him down as well. Oh, you know, so when my period was late, I was like, oh yeah, it's another fuckery, another fuckery month, can't mm. be asked for this, yeah, yeah, whatever, whatever. But it was like a week and a half. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? Let me just do it. I'm just gonna fucking do it. I didn't even tell him. I didn't okay. even t I didn't okay, tell him. Okay. I actually lied. I think I said, "Oh yeah, my oh yeah, I've started spotting my period. Okay. My period's come because because every time 
it's almost like he was starting to clock on a monthly basis as well. Like, oh, she hasn't died her period yet. Is okay. This it? okay, okay, okay. You know? Yeah. Um, and it was just, and so, and so when, when, when I did take the test, I didn't even tell him. Mm. And then I took it first thing in the morning. It was a Monday, I remember, it was a Monday morning. Yeah. I took it first thing. Oh, yeah, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> so I just like carried on doing whatever I was doing. Went yeah. back in because he was still asleep. Went, mm. th- and then, he, well, actually, no. At that point, he'd woken up once I'd once I stopped pissing around. Mm. And then I went into the kit. Um, the, fucking not the kitchen, the bathroom. <laughs> to the kitchen over the sink. Didn't like piss in squatted. the sink. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you, I didn't piss in the sink, man. <laughs> Fuck. Um, and then I looked at it and I was like, two lines. Or whatever it is, like plus or whatever, yeah. and I was like, "What the fuck?" Oh yeah, like, fuck off. <laughs> you know when you think, "Oh, like a false negative." Yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. that is also a. P- it's a, also a thing. thing. And I was yeah. like, "That's this bullshit in it." Yeah. Right. And so then I took another one. Okay. Because I thought, right, my morning pee is the most potent. That's what it is. That's what they tell right? you. So then, like, it's a hate I, t- I, I, I was like, I'm just gonna fucking take some more. I'm just gonna do another one. Okay. So I was like trying to pee as much as I could. Of course. So I peed, and then it came out again. I was like, well, this one's defo diluted, right? And this one's come as like positive, positive again. Yeah. So I went out, and I was like, babe. He was like, what? I was like, I'm pregnant. Yeah. And he was like, yeah. I was like, yeah. Yeah. He was like, yeah. Was oh. Like, yeah. <laughs> and then he's just so like, just cute. like, just like picked me up and yeah, oh, yeah. And it was. But the weirdest thing is, my dog knew knew that I was pregnant before I did. I hear that a lot. From people who have dogs, um, what did what did Ghost do? In fact, he was fuck. I mean, I've got an American bulldog, right? Mm-hmm. He's a big boy. Yeah, he's like forty five kgs. Yeah, mm. this dog. Right, any like I was having a glass. Of, I remember I was, where I was stood in my kitchen. I was having mm. a glass of wine. And I was talking to my fellow, right? And he just came and he sat on my feet. Okay, so what are you sitting on my mm. feet for, Ghost? Just piss off. Does he not normally do that? No, no, I mean like he, he hovers around me anyway, but yeah. usually he just like cracks on with it. Yeah. Every time I went to the loo as yeah. well, because <laughs> we don't we don't close doors in our house. Yeah. Right? Yes, he'd, he'd open the door with his okay. nose and he'd sit in front of me Aww, while I was peeing. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And then I then I read up on it afterwards and you know what dogs do? Because mm. dogs see you as part of their pack. Mm-hmm. So That's when correct. when a dog when another one from your pack is either like her, vulnerable, pregnant mm. They they almost like sit in front of you to shield you mm. because they can sense your vulnerability. Mm-mm-mm. I was thinking, why is this dog following me everywhere I go? That's sweet. Sitting like literally right next to me, lying on my feet, sitting on my feet. Yeah. And then I clocked it after, and it was both pregnancies he done that. Oh, that's it was both cute. pregnancies he done that. I've definitely heard and I've definitely read about it. It's funny. My partner has, well, they, he has two dogs, but they're family dogs, so mm. um, the dogs are kind of in between their homes. Um, say his mom's home and his his uh, grandmother's home. Um, I was like, I wonder if they're gonna do that to me. They did not do that to me. And that's fine. <laughs> they don't like you. That's I why. Mean, and you don't like them. Do you know what it is? <laughs> I do like them. I'm just not like I'm not dog the guy. I'm not the guy who's like, oh my god, the dogs lick my face. Oh my goodness, I'm not that guy. <laughs> I'm like. I'm also Ghanaian and I've lived in Ghana and the dogs that we have in Ghana are like, they come and say, hey, what's up? You good? Listen, I'm going to go and do my doggy business and then the dogs go off and they do stuff because they've mm. got shit to do. Whereas in the UK, people baby, the, the dogs are like, they're kids for some yeah, people yeah, and like, yeah. they carry them and do that kinds of stuff. I'm like, these dogs have four legs. We've got two. What's going on? Anyway, so that's my wow. thing. But they were kind of like, I don't think they, in fairness, I wasn't around them that much at all, but I don't think there was any real difference yeah. and stuff. Yeah, maybe if I was a huggy, huggy, huggy kind of person with them, I yeah. wonder if that may have been a bit different. I think maybe I if it was curious. in your own dog, though. Do you know what? Also, potentially that too. Yeah, I, mean, I don't think you any random dog is going to come up like, to you oh, and hey. sit on your feet because you're pregnant. What are you doing? <laughs> you're not part of my pack, but hi. It's true. That is true. And it's true. If you have your own dog, that's a totally different bond. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, all right, dogs, I see you. Hmm. Anyway, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> so yeah, that's that's how that's how that's how he was told. <laughs> um, what was I gonna say to you? I clearly stepped away from the mic. Never mind. Um, what was your like symptoms like? No, anything really bad for both pregnancies? Right, first pregnancy, I was feeling nauseous up until about sixteen weeks. Mm. I think I was only like I only puked twice. Um, and then after that, it was pretty much smooth sailing. Apart from the um, heartburn, son of a bitch, this heartburn, yeah, is like some. I had to call amb- on both pregnancies. I've called out ambulances because I, I thought you saying that. Actually, I thought but I don't think I clocked. What, what if this is a heart attack? <laughs> was it that? It was like that bad, babe. 
Right. So, like the sec- both pregnancies, it literally imagine you're wearing a boob tube, yeah. Yeah. And every area the boob tube covers, mm-hmm. right? So even like your side, your back, everything. Mm. Imagine that is being compressed. Okay. Right? So like it's being squeezed mm. to the point where I had to literally lie on the floor and do like yoga moves. Really? <coughs> yeah. Wow. Right? So it was it was so bad. Mm. And I called out the ambulance on the first pregnancy. And I'd get it. I'd get it on a fucking Friday as well when I finished work, oh which days. is most annoying. Like, like I can chill at the weekends. Yeah, now. apparently not. Now. And it was so bad. But anyway, oh. th- I mean, it it was just like because everything was moving, and and you know your stomachs obviously like, shits on your stomach, babies on your stomach, babies in your fucking chest is everywhere, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. But I had it so bad. But nothing helped. No, no Gaviscon, nothing, nothing helped me. I just had to almost ride it out. And the thing is, they say that happens because obviously the, the hair's growing on the baby, right? Bullshit. My eldest didn't, didn't have that much hair when she was oh, born. Oh, yeah, she didn't, did no, she? she didn't. Oh, yeah. That's, that's a lie. I'm thinking of a picture in particular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? Second one, yeah, fine. She, she, she had more hair. Yeah. But and even with the, but what happened with, like, with, with my youngest, mm. like, she, um, I would, I would be sick because of the heartburn, because mm. everything would just be stuck in my chest. Wow. And, I'd, and I'd, be, I'd be on work calls, and I'd be like, look, I've got to excuse myself. And I'd yeah. run to the toilet and just yeah. like puke. Yeah. So I was pretty much, with the second pregnancy, puking the whole way through it. I do if it wasn't that. like the um, the the morning sickness, mm. it was a heartburn. Because you had that, yeah, yeah, you did. But then with the second, I was bleeding up until about 16 weeks. Oh, wow, what yeah. was that like? The scariest fucking thing yeah. that you could ever imagine because you assume, like, and blood is normal in in pregnancies. Mm. It is, Mm-mm. you know, um, they say, like, so long as it's not like, you know, spotting is normal and obviously yeah. the implantation bleed. Yeah, but yeah, mine yes, wasn't the implantation bleed. I had like a, a like a little um, hemorrhage okay. in, my, in, in my cervix, basically. Yeah. And usually your body absorbs it, mm. right? Because it's very common. Mm-hmm. Usually body absorbs it, but mine, it wasn't, it was coming out. Yeah. So there's a one point, I, I'd keep on calling, mm. like, you know, the anti, you know, the antenatal unit and, you know, whatever it was, yeah. and my midwife. And they would just say, look, just keep an eye on it, keep an eye on it. Yeah. But you can't because you're in a constant state of panic because, you you know, you're wired that you think blood Something's equals wrong. bad news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's know? true. Very true. And I kept on thinking, well, I've still got the pregnancy symptoms. I'm still feeling really sick. Like, mm. you know, my boobs hurt, my back hurts. Like, you know, I'm still feeling like like pregnant. So it's OK. Yeah. There's a one point where I got a couple of clots. Mm, and that's really And scary. that's where I would like, I completely and utterly panicked. Yeah. And I just took myself to A&E. I was like, fuck this. I'm okay. going A&E. I'm not even fannying about. Yeah. Got there, they sent me to the this blue ward or whatever it is, mm. like the um almost like the the minor injuries kind of thing. Okay, and they said um, if you're not soaking through your pants, you don't need to worry. <laughs> and this these were like the receptionists. They were like, oh, it's an eight hour Yikes. wait. I was like, I'm like. I'm you gonna know. wait the eight hours. It's fine, but no, I get you. I was oh, like, "Well, geez. what are you gonna do?" And they're like, "We're just gonna. Sc- they'll probably scan you." I was like, "Well, I might as well go home, sleep, yeah. right, rest as much as I can, and then come again tomorrow." Okay. You know, but to be honest with you, like my my kind of symptoms were were fine. They were more, they were manageable. Yeah. I yeah. think the first pregnancy was you know was a breeze because it's new. Yeah. You know, you don't really know what to expect. You know, and yeah. you're just kind of embracing it. And I, and I mean, I loved it. I loved my bump. I loved being fucking pregnant. Yeah, I too. fucking loved it. I me did. too. 100%. I loved. I loved it for sure. I don't think I didn't have any. I know on the on the scale, the symptoms and all that kinds of stuff can be really intense. Mm. So though certain things were intense for me at times, I know that it could have been a lot worse, which is also insane to even fathom and to think that's the, the state of it. But uh, my first three months, I just I kept knocking asleep wherever I was. I would just be out. My body was just like, we're done. Yep. And that was it. Nausea was a whole thing. And I remember speaking to you about being nauseous. I was like, do you know what? I really would rather just be nauseous than sick. Then it's done. And you were like, nah, you're nauseous, then sick. And then the nausea remains. And I was like, okay, cool. So then this for me is bad, but it could be worse. So mm-hmm. I'm going to just deal with that. And then that was pretty much it. So I think after the first, mm, after the first three months, I think that was the state of... That was as bad as it got. I had the odd migraine here and there. Yeah. But then that was it. And then as I got bigger, then the pelvic girdle pain started to kind of become a thing. So Did you ever get lightning crotch? Uh, yes, I did. It's that was hilarious, isn't it? I never heard it. I n- didn't even know that was a thing. <laughs> and I was like, wait, what? 
But don't you literally, I was sat on the sofa and, and you're like, like <gasps> you need to just get up. You're like, like, get me up. It was kind of like just trying yeah. to understand like, wait, what, what is that? What is happening? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it yeah, only yeah. happened a couple of times, which I'm thankful for. because I, I only had some it people, once in my first. Right? I didn't have it. Um, and my mum was there. My mum okay. was up with us. Yeah. And she was like, it's happening. It's happening. Oh, I was like, it's not. <laughs> I was like, but something else is happening. lightning. Just lightning. <laughs> but um, that was it. So my symptoms weren't really, unless I'm forgetting something, they weren't. As bad Which on you the scale do, of things. you do forget your I, symptoms. I'm probably trying to remember every single thing because I don't want to forget anything at all. And then you but do it you again, do. you're like, oh fuck, this <laughs> is what it was. Right now, when the thing is, when my baby f- came out, when she, I saw her fall out of me on the bed. There she is. In that moment, I knew that I could do this again. Yeah, like easily. Yeah. So it was kind of like what whatever symptoms I thought I was going through I'm like yep. I can ride that again not a 100% problem. until you have to do the That's contractions it. again there we go fuck me yeah because contractions they are, are the worst they're thing. the worst pushing it out is fine uh, pushing it out is fine mate compared to the contractions do you know what I have to I hadn't thought about that for myself I I would agree with that because I think for someone like me I'm definitely a, I need to be doing something so to feel like I was doing something, yeah. I think really helped my mindset and helped me physically as well. Like I'm, I'm doing something. Yeah. This is moving because it's, 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 it's there, yeah. isn't it? And the contractions, I'm just having to understand that my body is squeezing and it's moving and it's doing whatever else. But I'm, I'm not in control of that. It's happening spontaneously. It's long, Quite man. Spontaneous. Contractions are long because you don't know yeah. how long they're gonna last for as well. Yeah. Um. What were your yours like? <laughs> <laughs> if you can recall my contractions fine <laughs> so yeah. both times <laughs> I'm trying to both times when it was around the three when I was three centimetres dilated mark I was puking <laughs> like literally and all I kept really? on thinking in my head was my dad's right oh, I'm a pussy <laughs> he didn't call me a pussy my dad never called me a pussy yeah but my dad did say you, you won't be able to take the pain you won't be able to take the pain yeah what I, you know what? I think because I'm obviously I'm my daddy's girl and all the rest of it, and he doesn't want me to get hurt and all that kind of shit. Why yeah. Why did you say that? I don't know, man. But they, all I kept on thinking the first time round was, you know what, dad was right. I am a pussy. I don't think I can do this, right? So no. But my, I mean, I was really lucky. Both labors, mm. they they weren't long. Okay. You know, like with with the first, I felt so, felt something a bit funny at about four. Like my waters didn't even go my first one. Okay. So I felt a bit funny from about four four in the morning. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, this isn't a normal pain. Mm. You know, this isn't my normal just like aches and whatever. Mm-hmm. And then my contractions started coming. Mm. Um, I thought I wanted things like my birthing ball. I fucking kicked it across the room. I was like, get the shit out of my face. Really? You know, um, I thought I didn't <sighs> want to be in the water. The first thing I said to my husband was go, literally go put the bath on okay. because I need to get into the water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I thought I needed a tens machine. I couldn't even be bothered to fucking figure out how to use it. I got one. I never used. I it. never used it. <laughs> I was like, this is just too much. Yeah. Like, I just I needed to move a lot. Okay. I needed to move a okay. lot. Okay. And and a lot of a lot of my contractions were in my back. Okay. Right. So that was the first one. Mm. And you know, from the time that my contractions really kicked in, from mm. about you know six in the morning mm. you know let's say six i mean she was born at like you know seven minutes past 12 mm. um okay. so they're only about six hours long so like mm. my, my whole labor was about eight hours which was fine and i birthed a lot of it in the bath at home actually okay so i went from like obviously like my first sort of contraction or whatever mm. up until i was seven centimeters dilated when i went into the hospital oh wow yeah 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 so i'd done most of it at home in the bath yeah dude yeah that's really impressive. Yeah, 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 yeah. From all my knowledge of like, childbirth, that's but the that second and the really second impressive. one, like my waters didn't really go. It's not this pop and gush. I didn't have any of that dramatic shit. I did, but yeah, did you? I remember you saying you're on the loo, weren't I was, you? I was on and the you, loo. you and your mum were getting ready for a walk, weren't no, you? No, we were getting ready to go pick up Athena from nursery, oh, okay. like my eldest from nursery. Yeah. And mum was like, "Come on, we're gonna be late." And I'm like, "All right, give me a second. So I was like hobbling. So I went to pee, and then yeah. I got up, and I was. And they, like the we were still coming out. Yeah. And only pregnant women know this yet at the yeah. later stages. You know when you're weeing, yep. you've got to move forward and backward, yes. forward and backwards really because you've got to really empty out. Your bladder. out. Yep. You think you've emptied it, but you haven't. You, you haven't. move forward and you've got like a ton more coming yes, out. Yes, that is correct. Right? That's so a massive tip to it's a anyone massive who doesn't move, know. It. Like literally rock forward and back yeah. on, the, on the loo. To really empty your bladder. To, you've got to empty it because you think you've emptied it and you haven't. You'll be back up again in about 30 seconds. Lit- pissed off. Couldn't. Truth. Right, in it? truth. Yep. 
So I thought it was that. And I was like, oh shit, I haven't like. Mm. So I sat back down. <laughs> and then, you know, you do like obviously like your pelvic floor, your kegels or whatever they yep. are. And I was yep. like, I can't even hold this wee in. And I was like, oh fuck. It's my waters. It's my waters. But it was like, still like. <laughs> It wasn't even there. It was nothing. <laughs> it was so fucking nothing. Yeah. Really? Yeah. And then I called my mum and I'm sat on the loo, right? With my massive belly and like mm. flipping bits hanging out. And my mum, it's my, are this my waters? Have they gone? I love your relationship with your mum because yeah. it's just like, mum, have a look. What's this? What oh, mum, what's this? Can you just touch that? And your mum does, your mum's involved. It. Your mum is fully involved and she fully does involved. it. She checks the things. I, I love that so much about the two of you. Yeah. So <laughs> and then, then she checked it and she was like, I think it is. Yeah. And then she got excited. Yeah. And then, like, obviously, you know, my fellow was upstairs and uh, and he heard all of this commotion, but he was on a work call and he was like, I ain't going downstairs just yet until they call me. <laughs> but yeah, and with the second, like, my contractions, that, so they, they went at three, mm. my waters went at three. And, you know, usually people go into the... Um, into the hospital really quickly, but I, I mean, I had, I have both pregnancies have got a group B strep, right? Okay, so yeah, it's yeah, really yeah. important that I'm put on a, on a drip, on, a drip, right? on antibiotics yeah. so that That's it can right. go to the baby. Yeah. With both pregnancies, both labors, the, the antibiotic, antibiotics didn't even go to me, let alone my fucking kids, right? Well, what do you mean? Well, because it was so quick. Like the first one, he was right. fanning about with the IV for about 20 minutes, trying to get in my arm, then my fucking hand. Yeah. I had my ass up in the air. It was just a whole thing, right? Oh. Midwife's trying to cover my bum hole. You know, it was just... <laughs> and at that point, you're like, I don't care. Like, just my, do what you need my, to do. My husband's losing his shit because he's like, why is yes, another it. man coming in while my woman's ass, when my wife's ass mm. up in the air? <laughs> <laughs> right. So he's like losing it. Mm. But, and and I still had to stay in for three days with, you know, with, with my oldest okay. because she had to be on antibiotics because they have to have antibiotics to kill right. the group B. Okay, okay, okay. And with the second... When your waters go, you have to go in really quickly because mm. within 24 hours, they've mm. got to put you on the IV drip. Yeah. So when I went in, no, I didn't even go in for ages. She was like, I called like two times to the antenatal because my contractions hadn't kicked in. I thought, oh, I'm going to have like a walk. I'm going to get in the bath at home or whatever. Yeah. Right. But I thought, let me just chill. Let me feed, you know, let me feed Athena. Let me give her a dinner. Yeah. Let me sit on my birthing ball for a bit. Nothing's really happening. Mm. And it came, you know, I went upstairs, I had a shower, I straightened my hair. Oh my God, did you? Yeah, man. Oh. Put my hair in like a little plait. <laughs> like, you know, my husband, he had a shower, he had a shave. Okay. He, got, he, you know, had a little shop before we left. I love it. We were just chilling, mate. Brilliant. Mum was like, you know, and we left at seven. And my waters went at three. Wow. And it was, uh, it was, it was, we left at seven because I called the hospital and I was mm. like, yeah, so I'm not really getting any contract. She was like, listen, you really need to come in now. We need you to come in now. Wow. I'm like, oh, all okay. right, all right, chill out. Usually mums, like when their mm. waters go, they go straight to the hospital. Yeah. I stayed straight at home. Wow. I was like, no thanks. I went straight in, I think. No, 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 no. Mine was like a, uh, Max had a gig the night before and before he left, he was like, he just spoke to my bum. Don't come until I'm back. When I'm back, you can do whatever you want because that was his, I think, gig. For that weekend, that was his last gig and then he had nothing in for a mm. good few days. So mm. he was like, don't come until then. And I was like, whatever, like cute, whatever, fine. Um, He came home, great, we're in bed, asleep, done. 6 a.m. on the dot, I, heard, I woke up to a popping sound and I was like... <laughs> <laughs> legit and it, it was an internal popping sound but it was so loud and I was like oh my gosh my waters are broken um, and at that point I think maybe maybe five ten days before I had like a false alarm so I was yeah. like hmm, okay maybe at some point um, and then I stood up I didn't I didn't wake Max up because I think the with the false alarm I'd woken them up straight away like oh yeah. my god maybe this is it blah yeah. blah blah I was like nah I stood up and then it was gush and I went oh my god she's coming so I knew she was a girl yeah. at that point so I was probably like Max, <laughs> so it's always a, yeah. Max. Yeah. And I said, I think she's coming. My water's just broken. And he was up. Like, okay. Boom, boom, boom. And Max, <laughs> Max is the kind of guy when he wakes up, he's on 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 job yeah. immediately. Yeah. So he gets up. I've I call them up and I'm like, yeah, it's broken. I'm fine. And I said, you know what? Can I just have a shower and stuff before I come? They're like, yeah, just get yourself ready. Whatever, come in. Yeah. So our bags and stuff are packed, showered, all fine, fine, fine. Went downstairs, Max went to get the car, and between me being downstairs and him getting the car, which is no more than maybe five, ten minutes or so, contractions kind of was like, no, this is a contraction. And I was like, fuck. Okay. Hey, fucking cane, isn't it? Super painful, and it was <laughs> mad intense. Yeah. Mad intense. And I was like, 
and th- I was using the app from um, Positive Birth Company. Pos- yeah, the Freya app. Company. Yes, yeah, thank you. I love app. that. Sorry, I was like, but what are you doing? Because I couldn't even do the math. You were trying to math with me. Like, would you? I the just, what? I didn't get it. Like, so you're meant to of you push the button to let you know when your contraction starts, and then you stop. And then you stop it after a point to let you know how long it's been for. And then you click it again for when the next one yeah. starts. And I was just a bit like, I couldn't I couldn't even stop anything because it felt like it was constant the whole time. Bearing in mind, ah. my, my, um, my whole pregnancy, I'm oh, sorry, my whole labor and birth, once my waters popped at six, my baby was here by 10.15. So I think everything was Jesus, just super was intense. Super quick. And super you know you have quick, another so one, right? It's just going to come. Like, literally, you're going to sneeze and it's going to, like, after my birth, pop the, out. Yeah, a midwife was like, you know what? If you get pregnant again, mm. the seconds you, it breaks, your waters break, get here, it gets your husband. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah, you're yeah. someone who does it yeah. quite quickly. And I was like, oh, okay. So I didn't really feel like I had the benefit of, like, you know, riding the wave and taking a minute to regroup and then going again, going again. You don't it know. You can't wh- regroup. It was constant. You can't constant. regroup because it, it just hurts so yeah. much. So I didn't have a come down. It was just like, yeah, yeah, I almost yeah. like it happened and I feel like I almost got my breath back and then it started yeah, again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I definitely had so no my, waves so to So my ride. second labor, mm. so like when, even though my waters went, mm. I wasn't really getting anything till about, I think my first contraction was probably about half eight, mm. you know, when I was walking from them monitoring me. So I didn't even need to go into the hospital that quickly anyway. Crazy. From them monitoring me yeah. to when she was born. Yeah. Um, no, to, to going into sorry the the um the delivery suite. Mm. It, yeah, I think I started at like half eight, right? Mm. And then she was born at twenty past twelve at night. So it's four okay. hours. Yeah, okay. and I was three centimeters. I remember at ten, ten fifteen, yeah. when, when they put the IV in the drip in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, I'd been there since half seven. So that's three <gasps> hours that's gone. I can't even. Right? Yeah, your time, the time frames that you're mentioning, I can't even imagine. Because for me, by seven. 7.39, I think it is. It was 7.39. I was only dilated one centimeter. Yeah. And I was like, wait, this is just one centimeter. The level of pain that I've been <laughs> experiencing, the time, what my body's been, this is yeah. just one. Yeah. And then when I got moved to my um, birthing suite, the delivery suite, um, by, let me see, you scroll 10.15, by 9.45, that's when they were like, oh, you've hit seven centimeters. At times to get on the bed and just get into your position. Yeah. So I can't with you saying you didn't you didn't get into your hospital until you were seven centimeters with your first one. First, I yeah. I can't even I can't even fathom that. What do you mean you were at home that whole time up until yeah. seven centimeters? Oh my goodness! Yeah. Because at that point for me it was just like it was excruciating. Yes, sorry. It was all incredibly painful and excruciating, and I had my mantras and my affirmations, and it did help me. It did ground me and help me get through it for mm, sure. Mm. And I know that we can talk about the pain in in a particular way, but it's obviously it's part of the process etc but it really does indicate to you or let you know where you are in your stage and yeah. i think it's so true when they say um when you get to the point where you feel like you can't do this anymore or you want to leave that's actually when the baby is imminent the baby that's is the trans- actually, that's the transition phase right? isn't exactly. it yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Now coming down the birth canal yeah and that was that was what my experience yeah. was like but um the pain is such a you have to find a way to you do find a pain. way though. You, you do. do. It's true. You know, you, you it's do. It's your body at this point. Yeah. You have to find a way to coexist because you can't escape it. You have to go through yeah. together. Yeah. So um, that was that was such an interesting headspace to be in. And I wanted to be as present as I could for everything. So, um, and just feel as much of everything yeah. as I could. So the gas and air for me, I don't think it did much. I, I really don't think it did. Because um, y'all... I was in it. And I describe it as like, I was on fire. That's how I describe childbirth. Like, my body was on fire. Your body Put was your on hand fire. in like, in a candle. Get that flame on you. That's what it feels like. The first one was, was quite surreal, right? Mm. But, the, and the second one, when I got, like I said, when I got to three centimetres, mm. when they checked me at like 10 o'clock or whatever. Mm. And, at that point, I was like, just give me a fucking epidural. Just get me an mm. epidural now, 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 now. I'm not did doing you, this again. Did you, um, was an epidural part of your birthing plan no, choices? Yeah. No, okay. but because I was like, this really hurts, man. Yeah. Um, I was like, I, just, I don't think I can take this pain anymore. Uh, so I was like, if I'm only three again, I'm only three, mad. right? But then I went from three <laughs> to like when, and then they, and I was like, right, if you're not going to give me an epidural, can I, I need to get into water. So mm. I actually gave birth to both my girls in the same delivery room. That's sweet. Which I is the that. most amazing thing, right? Yeah, because I don't and think people can often say no, that. No, like That's both great. my girls were born in the same room. Yeah. And first one, I didn't get into the water, at okay. the you know, in the delivery suite. But the second time, I was like, just put the water on, let me mm. get in. 
And so I remember going in there at about 11, mm. right? And they'd only checked me 45 minutes ago and asked three centimetres. So between quarter past 10 and quarter past 12, no, not even that, quarter to 12, within yeah. an hour and a half, I'd gone from three to, f- mm. again, full. Because when I was in the water, I was trying my best to like, you know, compose myself. Yeah. So in between contractions, yeah. I was barely falling asleep, right? I remember so you said that. Asleep. I didn't even know how that's possible. I was because I was so exhausted and it was, everything was hurting. Yeah. So I was like trying to like rest, so I was like going backwards, but I was slipping, right? Oh. <laughs> I just kept on fucking <laughs> slipping in between. And then it got to that point where I was like, I can't take this, get me out. Oh, wow. I was like, Can I have something else then? Yeah. And then we can give you a pethidine injection. Oh yeah. So I was like, fine, just give me that. And then I was like, I, I, I said to my husband, I was like, just take me home. I want to go home. I can't do this. Please, I cannot do this anymore. Yeah. And then when she checked me, she was like, oh my God, you're fully dilated. Mm. And that's at that point when she said that, and I remember I was crouching by the bed. Mm-mm. At that minute when she said that, I started feeling Ari like come up and down the birth canal. And yeah. when I say that is the most empowering feeling yeah. I've ever had in my life, Nothing feeling like her. I didn't feel it with my thirst. Okay. I didn't feel it, okay, feel it, feel okay. it with things. But with, with Ari, like she was, I felt her coming down yeah. and then back up. Because that's yeah. what they do, don't they? Yeah, that's what and I And it felt. was just like it the most, my mind. most empowering thing. And, th- and literally my mindset changed instantly. And I was like, right, let's do this. Get mm. me up on the bed. Let's fucking go. Mm. I didn't, I d- again, didn't feel the ring of fire with the first one. Neither did I. With the second one. Holy mother of God. But okay. it was fine yeah. because your baby's nearly there and all you give a shit about is your baby getting being them, in your yeah, arms. Get them out, yeah. You know? That's true. I didn't have the ring of fire um, with Z. I didn't at all. Uh, when her shoulders came out, I felt a little twinge, but it was like a little pop pop, like a little shimmy. Like, oh, bam, God. bam, and then she's Crushing out. my legs. Are you? <laughs> but it wasn't, it, it wasn't like a ring of fire. Nah, not yeah. that at all. When her head came out, they made me stop breathing and I had to change my breathing pattern to help her out. I don't even think I really felt her come out, like her yeah. head come out. But um, Max was like, she had, when her head eventually came out, she was like, you could just see her sort of like look around, like left to right, almost like, oh, there's another like, there's another room here. I, d- I didn't know about that. Which that was so hilarious. Funny. But she was just so chill and so calm. And then she eventually comes out. And from my position, um, I was on my knees and I was holding onto the bed frame. So when she came out, I could just see her arms and her legs because they were struggling to monitor her while she was in me. So they end up having to, and it's annoying because I forget what this bloody thing is called, but when they have to actually attach the monitor to, to them. To, to the head, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah and yeah, I yeah. really didn't want that to happen yeah. um, to her at all uh, because no one had had any issues monitoring the baby like at all. Mm. And with this midwife that I had, she was actually really amazing, but she was um, she was quite new and I, I want to say quite green in comparison to the other midwives that came mm. into the room. Mm. Um, and so because I, I, that was quite apparent, um, it was annoying that this was the, the step that they had to take because everybody else had been able to put the wireless one on and it was yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. By the God, then the wireless one died. Then the <sighs> pool that I wanted, they didn't have a pool. And I was like, okay, so I was in the shower with water, which really did make a difference, yeah. which uh, I loved. Then I had to come out of the water because the battery died on this, and I had to put on this. So those are all these little things that were happening that in my head, I was like, this shouldn't be happening Get at all. Get your shit Why? together, man. Right? So I was annoyed that that had to happen. But um, so when she came out, I couldn't really um, move that much. Um, I'm trying to, I think it's like a fetal scalp electrode or something that they need to yeah, have on just, the baby. Yeah. yeah. So we did that. So when she came out, I couldn't move, but then... I had to kind of like adjust myself, blah, blah. And then she got given to me. And I was like, oh my God, there she is. It's the most but amazing thing. Feeling her it? come down the birth canal was, is phenomenal. Yeah. I will never forget that sensation. Me too. Um, I didn't know I was going to f- feel it like that. But that was wild. Yeah. Like that was like, holy fuck. Yeah. Like there's a baby coming yeah. at me right now. Trippy as fuck. Like the word I use for all things motherhood is surreal all the time. Because it is just, it's just, cra- this is crazy. And beautiful and insane. And mm. like, what do you mean? They, oh, wow. Women are pretty fucking awesome. Oh my God. It, like just warriors. That's, like, how, that's how, and even if you don't have kids either, yeah. you know, I think women are just like, period. Just, you don't have to yeah. tell me twice. And like it, the way we can show up for whether it's it's just people in your life for kids whatever just just the capacity for compassion empathy for love for someone else yeah is phenomenal and i know men are are capable or i've definitely known men who have been in in 
that space of giving or that amount of giving i've known them to be able to do that as well that's great but when i say to you i am team woman i am team woman to the nth degree because this ugh, mate we're fucking phenomenal are you, are you fucking kidding me and you don't pay me the same as you pay a man are you mad oh my god are we going there? <laughs> not, i did that i've done it already i'm gonna do my best just to just to keep that we're so doing man. this shit we're going because there because i'm cool. just like you are kidding me. are you trying to tell me that i create life and you don't want to pay me the extra In what it? Mm-hmm. let me know if you can get there yeah, but yeah. anyway whatever um, <laughs> your, your birth choices um did they go accordingly to what you thought they were going to be uh yeah yeah pretty much yeah i went in sort of really kind of open-minded with stuff i wasn't kind of set on i'm gonna do this or i want this or, or xyz i mean because I had like low platelets as well, which basically means that your blood can't clot prop like properly. You, I was at risk of hem hem. I could never say this word. Hemorrhaging. Hemorrhaging. Mm-hmm. Um. So all throughout both pregnancies, they didn't really want to have me on an epidural. They didn't mm-hmm. really want to have me. Um. They w- they wanted you know a natural birth as much as possible. Okay. You know even like with a C and there, there could have been a point like even with a C section that I'd have to be sedated for that. Oh wow. So. Oh yeah. F- okay. Yeah. Oh, so okay. I found that really difficult to to kind of come to terms with. But right at the end, sort of like I'm talking like a week, like my consultation appointment a week before, mm. you know, I had both the girls. Um, I was told actually your platelet levels have been quite stable and they're high. So yeah. Amazing. But I wasn't allowed to go into into the delivery suite and I was okay with that. Okay. Because. I'm the kind of person that, you know, the more medical help that I can get should I need it, yeah, that's readily yeah. available. Let's just let's just crack on with that. Totally. It doesn't really bother me. Yeah. You know, so I wasn't really fussed too fussed about it. Mm. About going like with all the twinkly lights and shit. Because I thought, sorry, I thought I was gonna have time to set that all up. I did not. It was fine. No, I mean like <laughs> I closed my eyes throughout most of it anyway, because it hurt so much. <laughs> yeah, do you know that's such no, a good point. roller coaster you're like this. Ah. I don't even I don't even know why. So I was just staring at that the wall. Max was like, You were so in the zone, I didn't even know if I should touch. I was like, do you know what? She is so focused on whatever she's doing. I'm here if she needs yeah, me. Yeah, 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 And that was yeah, I get it. Yeah. I did think I was gonna have like a dark, quiet room with the candlelight and the I think that would have pissed me off. And stuff. I don't know what I would have felt. I with think that. I would get the shit out of my face. I think I'd like to experience it to know what I'd be like, but I was, it, again, it was 6 a.m., 7 a.m., 8, it's still kind of dark at that time, yeah. so it was just kind of getting on with it, and meh, that was it, but no. You know who I rate? Who? Women who do home births. I've got a friend who's planning one, I'm like, Should oh, tell let's go. Oh my God, imagine yeah. the cleanup after, fuck's sake. Oh my God. Who yeah. never thought about that? No. Yeah. All just I think what? about because is the clearing up pool. afterwards. Yeah, you still got to clean Fucking it. Fucking hell, who's yeah. going to clean that shit up after this now? No, it's true. It ain't going to be the midwives, is it? It's going to be you. You're going to have to literally just push something out of your vag and then you're going to have to fucking clean up after it. No thanks. Yeah, that's true. I'm not here for that lifestyle. Uh, <laughs> no, thank <laughs> you. <laughs> One thing I remember, just you saying clean up, that's true. I hadn't actually anticipated that. One thing I didn't realise, which is a, I think on this side, I'm like, that's really stupid. But I didn't think about this. Obviously, your belly's contracting. Mm-hmm. Your baby's also has been growing and living in this fluid. So as your belly's contraction, contracting, fluid is coming out of you. I didn't know that. Is it? Yeah. Because I remember, um, like, uh, let me see. The, fir- the With the first false alarm that I had, um, they were like, you know what? Where if your water breaks or whatever happens, wear a pad. So when you come in, yeah, you yeah, can yeah, kind yeah, of see. see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know certain stuff. Right? Yeah. So I made sure I did that when I was coming to the hospital the second time. And it has time. to be a maternity pad, not like your always pads, yep. guys. Yep, maternity pad. has to be the maternity best pad. Best friends. Yeah. Um, it's so thick. Yeah. It's not, not comfy It's not comfy at all. At all. Like, it's they like really hurt. Of, like stuff just yeah. against you. Um, when your vag is already on yeah, fire. Yeah, li- exactly. <laughs> my, uh, my I have a tip fluids. about that, by the way. I'll check <laughs> Don't in a minute. Get it. My fluids were green. So I knew, okay, then there's my cronium in the water. So basically the baby's pooed in, in their waters. And yeah. That could either indicate we need to get the baby out ASAP, ASAP or yeah. or not. So I I was like, okay, this is what the fluid looks like. So I get there, they're monitoring me before I get taken to the, the delivery suite. But as I contract, that fluid came out of me each time. So is I it? yeah, so I was a bit like when um the I guess a midwife wanted to do a check, I was a bit like, Oh, Jim, but it's really messy down there and she looked at me like, Well yeah, of course. You're contracting, you're having a baby. So it was funny what the that fuck I was did you still. What was going to happen? But the thing is, I didn't. I didn't think that contracting 
meant obviously it's squeezing everything right it's squeezing i didn't know the water came out. You out so obviously it's emptying you as much as it can i did not but know my that. waters didn't break with my first so how does that work then i don't know but for me every time that. every time there was like fluid coming out fluid coming out so at one point i remember just sort of standing up before i went to the delivery suite and then there's every time it would go fluid would come out and i was like oh my gosh i didn't i didn't even think that could have been part of the process at all. Oh, I didn't know. I didn't so know that. when you were just saying about cleanup, I was like, oh yeah, I forgot how messy it is. And that's just also part of what it is. And it's even weird, right now it's weird to call it messy because it's not messy. It, this is what it is. But um, yeah, clean up. I don't, I don't think it's about, I mean, yeah, it's, it's just can't be asked to clean up. I deflate I'd, the pool, like put, the, put, the pool a, put a fucking wash up. on with all the blood on everything. Like, yeah, that's true. You know, I, like, I, don't know. I didn't think about the clean up element of it. And I, like, you know, all yeah. of the blood, because there's a lot of blood. Yeah, I, I think a concern for me was how much, how much I would bleed because I ended up discovering that I had fibroids, which I had no yeah, idea yeah, I had. Yeah. I had three. Two that was super tiny and nobody was bothered about, but there was one that was growing mm. with the baby. Mm. Um, and so they were worried that that might block my um, exit canal, the birth canal. So I was always in a state of, it might be a C-section or it might be a natural yeah. birth. And I really wanted a natural birth, but again, you just don't, there is an element of everything being in flux. Like yeah. you're not gonna know how things are gonna go. So mm. you have to roll with that. Mm. So that was, um for someone who's definitely a planner, that was an interesting space to be in because I didn't know, I didn't know how to prepare is what yeah. it felt like. So I definitely had like two birthing plans almost and the natural one um, went fine. So that was what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah. Do you have a very vivid memory in birth? Is there one moment that is like crystal clear? Like, oh my gosh, I'll never forget that. I have a few from the first one. Okay. I think the first one, I... I vividly remember like when I said to my husband, can you just go and put the bath on? When I walked into the uh, the room, into the bathroom, he'd like put all of like, you know, my scents, like, like lavender and chamomile and what I'd been like having a bath in throughout my pregnancy. Mm. And he put candles around and it was just gorgeous. And I remember at one point I was lying on my side in the bath, like just trying to, whew, um, to to breathe, and then the other the other one from my first was yeah. Watching my husband get ready <laughs> while yeah. I'm like puking up. Like I got out of the bath. I was like, we need to go now. We need to go. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's time now. Like I know it's time. Your body knows it's time yeah. as well, right? Yeah. So I was like, we need we need to just go. And he's there, like you know, with his beard and like put. I was like, why are you wearing your new? And he got this like new like thing cardigan Zara, right? jacket thing for fucking Zara. Yeah, I love this, this black bit. thing. I was like, why the fuck are you wearing your new cardigan? Like basically. Like being Punjabi, we call it a koti. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why are you wearing a stupid koti for? Yeah. yeah. He was like, well, I want to look nice for her. I love. When she comes I, out. I love that response. I love that that's what he was, was thinking. Like, I love that's what he was doing. So no, he, was, he was like, I want to look nice for her. When she comes out. I was like, you know what? You do you, boo. Yeah. He's there fucking about with his beard, like literally brushing his beard and putting this flipping thing. You know, I was like, all right, fine, man, whatevs. Yeah. That's one of my f most favorite. Um, yeah. Dad moments from any of my friends telling me about the what their partners are like and stuff that's one of my favorite ones yeah. like he wanted to look he nice he wanted to look nice I for his that. girl right <laughs> and and that's you fall in love with them even more yeah. when they do stupid shit like that innit? That's hilarious. did he do that for the second one yeah he did, did he? he actually wore a pink jumper as oh, well hello. because he was like yeah i want to again he shaved and showered everything everything put his like, after shave everything he was like fanning about with his beard and he was like right, i'm ready now ready to go that's he so got cute. his snacks got yeah. my got his fucking snacks got my <laughs> snacks <laughs> Um, with the first one, I remember though, mm. like when I was, when I was arse in the air, mm. when they were like fannying about with like the IV, mm. I remember just saying to the good one, it's coming out of my asshole. Mm. She was like, it's not. I was like, I'm telling you now, this baby's going to come out of my asshole. That's what it is. Right. And, uh, I'm going to be on the front page of the Sun newspaper. But the first woman who's birthed <laughs> out of her bum baby hole. from her butthole. <laughs> that was going to be me. So she was like, you're just wild, aren't you? She's like, you're just mental. You had a fun midwife, though, didn't you? Like she was great. She yeah. was like, she was a swearer. She was like, let me do it. And she was really encouraging. That's nice. Um, the second one, <laughs> I remember going to the um, the hospital. Yeah. And because it was, it was at night. And so they didn't have the... Um, 
you had to um the normal suite wasn't open so you had to like press the b- press the button or whatever yeah. to 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 be let in to the uh, to the suite Mm-mm. and i was sat there and i'd press the button so me and my husband are sat there and this other like really like heavily pregnant lady comes along mm. she's like oh have you pressed the button i was like yeah i was up but they haven't come yet so she was she was fanning about pressing the button yeah and she was um and she managed to get through to them and she turned around and said, oh, yeah, I'm here um, because I've been asked to come in, blah, blah, blah. And then she turned and she looked at me and she was like, oh, what are you here for? So I could tell them. I was like, oh, I'm I'm in labor. And she was like, what? You're in labor? <laughs> she was like, yeah, you really need to let us in because I've got a lady here who's also in labor. Mm. So she was like very concerned. She was like, why are you so chilled out and relaxed? I'm like, uh. <laughs> so it's fine i'm not there yet i haven't really got any control yeah. i'm all right like you know you she, and i was i said to her she opened the door she's like come on come on you go i was like it's all right babes you go yeah. like don't worry about it like he'll open the door for us it's all right yeah and she was just so surprised by that mm. i mean the second one was obviously me flailing around in the fucking pool in between yes, yeah. contractions because i couldn't keep my shit together that's mad are they like oh yeah it's just just nuts mm. um how has how has motherhood like impacted I guess one of the key things about this this pod is just for anyone who's self employed or creative or entrepreneurial and they're trying to figure out how to have a family and work at the same time or how they're gonna manage their time, all that kinds of stuff. Like how has motherhood impacted you creatively or how you how you work? And the thing is I know you, you've come from a corporate space or background. Mm-hmm. But you're definitely someone who's also always been creative. Yeah. And I think now with you setting up your own business, you're now stepping into that space more. Yes, it's a business, et cetera, but there's still an element of creativity attached to this and um, running your own business and being entrepreneurial. So how have you found, how has motherhood impacted that whole space of being or working or just sitting in that space mm. as well? How, that, how has that been for you? Um, yeah, really hard. <laughs> 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 Everything's just fucking hard, isn't it? <laughs> Um, it's been it's 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 all about time mm. for me my sort of you know journey at the minute and what I'm kind of going through it's about time yeah. you know I've got two very young kids you know we we don't live you know close to family so like mm. you know it is just me and my husband with the yeah. girls um, so we're not able to kind of just palm them off and then I've got like hot, you know a day or like whatever to do it yeah what it's done is it's made me really stripped for my time okay C- cleverer with my time as mm. well right and figuring out when i'm most my most creative and yeah. when I, when i can excel a, at the you know the different points yeah because starting a business there's so many different elements to it you know you've obviously got like you know your product your service or whatever mm. but then i mean like for me for example i've got the tech side of it mm. i've got the legalities around it i've got like stock i've got a, you know all the creative side yeah. of like shooting and you know like taking you know images and putting like my socials together and all there's so many different elements yeah and what i've been able to do and i do urge anyone who's like thinking about going into this is figure out the days when you're most productive doing certain tasks Mm. so in the morning i'm in the morning i'm really productive on like you know going through like legalities and going through like contracts or you know anything that text heavy anything anything that's text heavy brain power because i've always been like that though like first thing in the morning when it's quiet i'm just there and i can focus Mm. um and then sort of like throughout the day i do things which you know where the oldest at nursery i've got the youngest or she's having a nap or whatever i'm able to do like more creative kind of stuff like write content and things like that Mm. and then when i've got both the girls again this is like my typical day when i've got both the girls i do like the brain dead stuff you know things like oh let me email that person to follow up on that inquiry or or let me like you know email that and just do all like let me look at images that i can that i like the look of i can add it to my pinterest board Mm. so i can speak to like my photographer and blah 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 yeah and then in the evenings, again, it comes to like, right, okay, I really need to focus on getting this, this, this done really quickly in the next sort of like hour and a half that I've got. Yeah. So it's about managing your time and knowing when you're really create. you know, what, where, what time you, you work best at. Yeah. That's really So, helpful. but I have, I, you know, things have delayed because I don't have a lot of time. I've got every intention yeah. of waking up at fucking 5 a.m. Yeah, yeah, to get going. I'm still snoozing at bloody seven o'clock. Snooze. Do you know what I mean? And then I'm like, oh that. shit, like, I've, like I could have had like two hours doing it. And, yeah. and then it's the guilt. You know, you've either got mum guilt or you've got like not progressing and doing something for you guilt. Yeah. 
which is a really hard ba- hard thing to balance, I think. I know. It's, and it's also like, which of the lesser of the evils do you want to like fuck with yeah. at, at that moment? But it it is really tricky. And I think I'm now starting to experience that more now that I'm getting more and more into the flow of really getting back into work, yeah. really getting back into business. I mean, in saying that, like my first job pre-baby, um, sorry, post-baby was maybe two and a bit weeks after, I think I had a voiceover job booked before I had given birth. Um, I didn't mind it so much because I was able to do it from home, not problem. Then I had another one the, the week after, but I had to go into a studio. So then I was away from my little one yeah. and I just felt, I missed her so much yeah. which I didn't anticipate. I felt so bad for leaving, mm-hmm. bearing in mind she was with her dad and all she did was sleep. But I still felt terrible for not being yeah. there. Um, and then with her being a lot older, maybe about say maybe eight, nine months or something, I remember being on a on my phone doing, I don't know, replying to an email or reading a script, something. And I remember her sort of grabbing me and then sort of moving her head into my line of sight to, to look at me. Yeah. And I felt, A, that was the cutest thing I'd ever seen because she'd never done that before. But B, I felt so awful. Like you had to grab me to get my attention. Yeah. Or you felt like you weren't getting the attention yeah. that you needed. And I was like, oh my God, I'm the worst. Yeah. It kind of inspired my next project, which I've, I've done, which is the book. But um, I never wanted her to feel like I wasn't there or present. And for for there to be some kind of like, I don't know, some kind of realization in that space that I wasn't paying attention to her at so young, I felt terrible for. So that was my mm. first real experience of this mum guilt thing. Um, but it's wild. But it's like if you're a working mum or if you're someone who's providing for your family, you 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 have to find you have that to. balance somehow. It's got to be done. Um it's nuts it's insane it, the juggling act that mm-hmm. is parenthood is crazy yeah i think i think if like, i was having the same conversation with my hairdresser yesterday right mm. and very very similar like Mm-mm. she's got like an older old, older girl yeah and she was saying that she was just replying to something on her phone like an email or something and her daughter was like had asked her like oh mummy like look at this or something mm. and she'd said to her daughter oh, just give me just one minute okay let Mm-mm. me just finish doing this just give me a second and then when she got to her daughter she asked her daughter like oh what is it and her daughter was like, oh, no, don't worry about it now. Oh, and it's like, wow. you know, and, and, and I said, but, you know, and, when I, and I said to my hairdresser, I was like, yeah, but how do you balance it all, though? I was like, yeah. look, you know, there are certain things that do require your attention. M- majority of our attention is on our kids, mm-hmm. yeah? And it is, no, it right? Is, it, it is. is. Really, truly, it's 100%. Everything it, else just has to fit on top of that. Exactly. That's when it gets nuts. Well, exactly. But there's got to come mm. a point where you've just got to be a bit kinder to yourself, I think, as well, yeah. you know, when it comes to this stuff. And just you know realize what you're doing yes you're doing it you're doing it for you you're also trying to leave a legacy for your children yeah, you know too. build an empire so they don't have to go through the shit that you've gone through yeah you know they don't yeah, have yeah. to struggle uh you know and they don't have to like i said just deal deal with the stuff that you've had to deal with mm. you know that's but you're also showing them that you know this is how you do it this is this is how you do it this how this is how it can yeah. this is how it can be done I was going to say you can have it all, but I'm really testy with that. <laughs> really fucking testy with that. I hate it. The thing it. is, I used to be someone who was like, fuck yeah, you can have it all. I don't Listen, know if I want it all, you know. You can have it all. Because someone used to say to me that, no, apparently the thing is, you can't have it all. Basically, out of the three things in your life, your relationship, um, mm. your career, and ooh, is it your money? Maybe it's your finances. Basically, out of those three things... Or is it happiness? No, happiness, right? <laughs> <laughs> Which isn't. Out of those three things, apparently you will only, you can only ever have two two out of the three. Yeah. Something is always going to fall off. Yeah. And I was like, I refuse I refuse to have that. You can't... You can't. First of all, telling me what my limitations is is ridiculous. That's just not going to happen. You can't do that. But I was like, yo, <laughs> with this baby stuff? Wait, what? I'm a mother. I'm my own self, my own entity. I am a partner to someone. I have my, I'm a creative. I have my businesses or whatever else. Like, okay, cool. I have to split myself how many ways? Because sometimes I feel like you've done a great job. Then it's like, oh no, wait, right, but you forgot about this bit yep. or this is, uh, has been dropped. So then it's like trying to find, okay, how do I pick that back up? Because I don't want my relationship to suffer. I don't want my relationship with my child to suffer. I don't want my work to suffer. Um, and I've mentioned those three things. Not forgetting, you've still got friends, family, mental health, da 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 <laughs> whatever to also figure out and yep. fit in and 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 uh, and just do those things as well as you want to or as well as you used to it is the juggling is insane mm-hmm. and can you ha- i'm i'm still fighting and trying to fly the flag for you can have it all i don't know how insane i am with that but i'm i'm yes 
I'm I'm with you. I'm with you on it. I'm with you on it. I, I'm totally with you on it. I just kind of feel like you know. There's, Ooh, I don't know whether man. we've put that pressure on ourselves mm. as well. Like you know, like modern day mums or whatever that mm. you can have it all. So you're gonna burn the fuck out quicker. Do you know what I mean? Right. Like you can be the best mum, the best wife, the best cook, the best yeah. friend, the best daughter, the best everything to yeah. everyone. Mm. But actually, you know what I've realised, especially over the past few months, is I've got to fill my own cup. That if my cup is not filled, right, what and and what what am I bringing to the table? What am yeah. I bringing to the party? I've got to prioritise myself, yeah. you know, because I'm not going to be the best mum if I'm fucking burnt out. I'm mm. not going to be the best wife. I'm not going to be a good friend. I'm not going to do all these things. Mm. I won't be able to do it because yeah. I'm just going to be on the edge the whole time. When when I have these thoughts, even just hearing what you've just described, it does make me think about what our mums did. Mm. Obviously, you've got an Indian mum. I've got a Ghanaian mum. And I know how they would have grown up or I have faint ideas as to how they would have grown up back in the day. I, they may not, they may or may not have had their own businesses or, or whatever else at that time. I just don't even know if they even had time to think about these things. Mm. Just because back then, and I'm, I'm thinking about them growing up on a societal level, I don't think it would, sorry, I don't think, I know it wasn't about your mental health or your this or mm. blah, blah. You were the best mum, you were the best wife. That was it. That's it. And you had to excel in those spaces yep. and figure out how that worked. And that was your job. And that that was, exactly. So I don't even think you had the outlet to, not even to have a com, have to complain to someone about shit. I just don't even think, I wonder if that was even, did you even think you could, you could do that? Mm. Because you had to be the wife, you had to be the mom, mm. you had to do this. Mm. And it had to get done because you were the one doing it, regardless of your husband being there or not. This was on you. Mm. So I, I wonder if they ever had those moments of respite or if it was just normal to be burnt out and that's just it you get up and off you go if you even considered yourself burnt out or this is just the state of the yeah. status quo so you just do it this this whole pod kind of has made me think about i wonder what my mom was like or what she <gasps> thought we should get her on this be hilarious It'll, i do want to get our moms on there just I, like I need i need her to be on this and do you I, know what? I, I need to be here. Do you know what? She's actually coming She's... to London in Jan. So your mum is wild. It would be hilarious to have her on this. Can you imagine your mum and my mum doing that as a? Oh my god! Oh my god! Should we totally do that? Fucking ah! hell! I don't know if they'd kill each other or actually really get along. I don't know. I think I feel like they'd crack <laughs> each other up. Yeah. I, f- I see a lot of laughter. <laughs> but it would be so amazing to understand. Yes, a uh, partly the cultural differences, and I say that. Even though I feel like there's so much similarity across, I guess, people who are considered ethnic minorities in terms of how we do things. Mm. I think there's, um, oh my gosh, there's just there's way too many similarities. And there's also this, uh, the types of pressures that we all face are, again, we all face those things. Do you know what I mean? Like the whole, when are you having kids or when are you doing this? Or you need to be a doctor or a lawyer. You've got to mm. be this. Like all that kinds of stuff is so typical. I think it'd be quite hilarious. But this has made me just wonder, like, how did she do it? And my mum had five kids. Man. Like, we're on our ass after one. After one or two, we're like, no. I gotta start a podcast and give tips and hacks to people. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. what, what is that? Do you, what, what is that? Isn't it? Whereas my mum's out here with however many kids she had at Isn't my it? age and like about podcasts and tips <laughs> and tricks. You just fucking go on with it. Isn't it? Um, that's so hilarious. So it, it has made me think, like, shit, how does she do this? Yeah. Like, w- what does. I can't, but that was their goal, and that was their goal, yeah. and their sole goal, and their their sole priority yeah. because that's how they were brought up, right? Yeah. It's what you said earlier. Yeah. So that's what that's what their focus was was on. Ours is different, you know. It is a different time now. You know, women mm. have to work as well because you know it's not like you know the man's the sole earner and that's it. Mm. And he's a breadwinner, and we just sit there and bear his kids and look after the house and, and wear yoga yeah. pants. Yeah. You know, it isn't. It's not <laughs> it's not like that anymore. You know, we've, there's got to be a two-income household. It yeah. has to be. Sorry, living in London in this economy. Mate, absolutely. like just living anywhere, it's like fucking hard. Yeah. Nice you know, true. and if you want all those nice things, you, you know, you're going to have to work. But you both got to work for it. Yeah. You know? What um project have you started or did you start when you became a mum? I feel like every mum started a new project, whether it's successful or not, whether they completed it or not. I feel like every mum picks up a new project after they had a kid. You what know was what? yours? My first, my first maternity leave. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> what? I'm trying to think, what can I do? What can I do? What can I do? 
Um, I didn't come up with any ideas. Right? <laughs> Just, but it was COVID that time as well. So. Oh, yeah, of course. You had COVID. <laughs> yeah, so I, m- oh. m- my first baby was a COVID. <laughs> it, was, it was a COVID baby. It was a COVID baby. Lockdown <laughs> baby. Um, and then the second one is yeah. the second one was when I came up with Glamber. Mm. The second one was Glamber. Like, I just had that idea. Um, and that's because I was on Vinted and I made, made a bit of money, man. Fabulous. I, I never make money on The project Vinted, was great. clearing my shit out. I got so obsessed okay. with just putting everything on I to get rid of it. Not even like my decking that I like like got like got picked up and got rid of. Oh, yeah. Right? It sold it on Gumtree. Oh, did you? Made a shit ton of money from it. Second hand wow. decking, yeah. You can fucking sell anything, man. You can sell anything, I promise you. Wow. Yep. Cash in hand, job done. Wow, okay, cool. I sorry, I didn't even end like things like online like car boots. I love all of this stupid crap. Online car boots, though. Yeah, man. That's a natural thing. Yeah, online car boots. Wow. I quite like doing car boot sales anyway. I've done one before and it I was loved really it. It's fun. fun, man. I really enjoyed it. Like doing but things like that. Too. I think that was my project, like clearing out space mm. and clearing shit. Okay. You know, and making a little bit of pocket money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Nice. Like, nice. I call it wine money. <laughs> wine money. It's not I pocket money, it's my it. wine money. <laughs> Um, so yeah, and then th- then obviously like Glamble was born at the start yeah. of this year when I had the idea, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's because like my husband had to mm. make a loft conversion. He had to put all the the the, the flooring down in our yeah. loft. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I had no space <laughs> for my for my stuff, and I know every other single Asian person you know Has can resonate situation. with that. It's either in a fucking suitcase, <laughs> or it's in the cupboard, stuffed right at the back, or it's up in the loft, or yeah. Yeah, you got traditional so, ways. So that, be somewhere, and yeah, so that's where the idea came from, and that's what I've started. Yeah. And I'm, I mean, I'm still doing it. I'm still, I'm still working on it. Perfect. It's not a business. Yeah, very exciting. Very, very I'm, exciting. I'm super excited to to see how that goes, where mm. it goes, just because I think people are gonna find that so useful. Yeah, so useful. I mean, from your wedding, I still have stuff <laughs> set in my. Where have I got it? Oh, I've got a vacuum packed, and it's in store. It's in storage somewhere in my home, but. And that's with me with maybe like five or seven outfits. Whereas if you, that's five or seven outfits. Isn't it? So with you going to functions and weddings and stuff all the time, I don't even, I can't even imagine. But mate, imagine if you could have rented something. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Rent it, wear it once, wear it for a couple of hours, send it back, job done. Yeah. Yeah, it's just so easy. Yeah. And I know that there are, there are systems like that for like maybe gowns or if you're going to a premiere or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But I think, again, this is so viable for everybody else who does need to hire or rent something that is that is super high end for whatever function or event that they're going to but do you have the space to keep it or you've got a ton of stuff that you know you're not going to wear anymore yeah that could be useful for somebody else so i think yeah i think it's a dope um a dope business i'm super excited for it Mm, me too i'm very excited for it for sure um what is your if you can answer this Mm. uh what is your biggest love or biggest takeaway or even biggest struggle with being a mum? Yeah, that tends to be the last the last question I pull out of my oh, question hat. I like this. Mm. If there is. You might not have any, you might no, have some. Yeah, well, of not. course. You, I mean, I think no. we've spoken a lot about struggles, haven't mm. we? You know. Yeah. Uh, we have spoken a lot about, you know, how, how difficult it is to manage it all and feel like you're really you know, being the best and doing the best for mm. everyone. Yeah. You know, and for yourself. Mm. Um, oh, mate, the biggest love is just, it's, it's just, oh, fucking hell, it's just their faces, isn't it? They're yeah. so bloody cute, man. I can't cope like, with the cuteness. I'm, I'm like, how, 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 <sighs> how did I make something so And also adorable. so polite. How? Like, just my how? youngest isn't polite, yeah? She's just wild, right? But the eldest is just, um, are you okay, mama? Oh. Thank you, mama. Um, I'm so sorry, mama. I'm not, oh, my God. Um, but that terrifies me. Why does it terrify because you? Because then I, th- I sit there and I think, don't, I don't want you to be, don't apologise when you've got nothing to apologise for, number one. Okay. Yeah. I am know I'm teaching you manners. I'm teaching you kindness. I'm teaching you, or we are, sorry, <laughs> not just me. <laughs> we are, you know, teaching you all of these things. But I think, I th- yeah, I think it's the, you know, there there is a struggle, I guess, with that as well, a worry with that, isn't there? That you don't want them to like, grow up to be, 
expecting, you know, pushovers or anything like that. I'm raising girls. I'm raising women at the end of the day. You know, it's a very, very important job, especially now, I think. Mm. You know, I think we're in a really different... Um, it's a different game now when it comes to, to, to you know, to raising raising girls. You've, you've got to teach them to, to, to be everything, but also accept mm. them for who they are. Mm. Um, so I think I think the biggest struggle is always the worry of, fuck, are we getting it right? <laughs> are we doing a good job? Are we getting it right? Yeah, no, you know? I get that. I think and... that's one of my biggest things, to be honest. Yeah. And th- yeah, and the love is just, oh my God, them. And just seeing them you know, grow and just be so beautiful and just complete us. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. Just the love for your kids is outrageous, mm-hmm. isn't it? Mm-hmm. It's outrageous. I'm falling over myself. Um, it is outrageous. I think I remember someone saying to me, um, is it really like what they say, like the love, like is a love that you never felt before? And I think yeah. automatically I went, yeah, yeah, it is. And then I, I've spent some time since really thinking about that. I, I don't know if it's, necessarily like oh it's a love that you've never felt before is the joy for me is the sheer amount of joy that she brings into my space or into my world just watching her grow and experience the world and adapt and and find her feet find her way has been such a joyful Mm. process and then her smile to me oh my gosh my world is just oh my like let me cry sure i cry all the time now which is ridiculous but great um so like the level of joy that she brings just by being herself to me has transcended anything and mm. everything. Mm. So I think that's more my thing. Is it a love that I've never felt before? I think it's a protectiveness I've never felt before or a ferocity I've never felt before because I'm a fuck you up. As you imagine. In it. I don't know if I can take you, but that is the energy that I have. Um, That's been, that's been surreal and phenomenal to experience and yeah i mean the love is the love there's no it's indescribable but for me i think it's the joy mm. that really kind of like floors me sometimes yeah like i can't believe i'm this happy just watching you yeah just be and exist and do your own thing and stuff so that's that it's crazy the weird thing i find though mm. and and whether it's and it obviously all stems for the love of your child is mm. that when you feel like you've got nothing left to give mm. you you know you're you're broken you're physically exhausted you're mentally exhausted mm. you know you just you just can't and you need to reset that's why those two hours at night are really important for me when the girls go to sleep yeah because it i reset in those two hours wow, before i nice. go before i go to sleep right i haven't found that yet yeah um <laughs> But it's that when you feel like you've got nothing left, mm. but then somehow you don't even have to dig for it. You just get this almost like, not even a burst of energy, but this, I don't know whether you go into like, I don't know, you know, autopilot and you just do it and you mm. carry on doing it. And that's what motherhood is. You're going to keep on doing it and you'll carry on yeah. and on and on and on until the end of time. Yeah, I agree. I experienced that in a sort of, quite clear potent sort of way when i was ill the first time i was ill Mm. and i've got kid you can't be ill what are you on about i can't be ill (laughs) i was like i was like oh my god and that's how genuinely Mm. how i was feeling but the second like she was awake or she was doing something that just disappeared it had to disappear for me to be able to complete whatever task i needed to do with her that was crazy to Mm. me because i didn't know i could do that yeah that's like a whole crap. <laughs> I know it was a good thing or bad thing, but I didn't know I could do that. It's There's crazy. nothing else in life though that is the, is the same. Like you won't keep on going on and on and on for no. anything no. or anyone else. Yeah, but you will for your but you will for your child. Yeah. yeah, that's that's the way to explain that. You'll just keep on it's going. Crazy. Oh my days! Like it's it truly. It, there's nothing like it. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And however you mother, whether it's your kids that you've birthed or kids that you've picked up along the way, kids. We pick up, I feel like we pick up mums. I picked up your mum and I've picked up a few other friends' yeah. mums along the way. So it's like your your kids kind of grow and they come in all shapes and sizes from different places. It's just, there's, this is nothing like it. It's mad. It's insane yeah. and amazing yeah. and insane again. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. but yeah. Um, there's loads and loads and loads of stuff that I, I feel like I want to pick your brain, but I feel like I want to save it for other topics because you're obviously going to be back on this well i hope loads. so yeah obviously. i'll bring prosecco again i i yes please or i'll do another like... drink maybe i'll do maybe when i come out i'll like pick a cocktail every time sure i'm not mad i'm gonna have like cocktails let's, let's do it cocktail shape absolutely and, shit. and i'm sure you'll be <laughs> hosting away and doing whatever else but like there's just there's so many 
areas to this. I know we've kind of really concentrated on like the birth and yeah. pregnancy and that kind of stuff, but things from breastfeeding to I don't even bloody know what else, but just this off like recovery relationships, relationships. Oh my days. It's Not just, just with your partner, so but with everyone else yeah, as well. And yourself as yeah, well. And yourself, There's just yeah. so many four sets to this whole thing called motherhood. So I'm looking forward to exploring all of those topics with you for sure. But Very good. I mean, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for inviting me. How was it? How'd you feel? We've popped your podcast cherry. Yeah. Bang. Exactly. You know what? You're right. It's just like a chat, isn't it? But um, for you, though, with the mm. new business, with mm-hmm. what's coming up, where can people find you? What should they look out for? Well, let's look out, obviously, on my socials. So it's... Um, I'm on Instagram. <laughs> Not on Facebook <laughs> just yet. Fair enough, fair enough. I feel like, you know what? I don't even know where to go on Facebook. I get it. In it. Even have a page, but like a page for the business, but I get it. Yeah. Facebook is a bit of a yeah, yeah. for me. So it's glamber, G-L-A-M-B-E-R dot mm-hmm. official, mm-hmm. official, official. Mm-hmm. Um, we're launching in the next couple of months, um, but there's obviously going to be lots of lots of information coming through Okay. Um, online. Yeah. I'm hoping to start doing TikTok, but I don't know whether I need a little bit of help with that one. That's fine. Everybody I'm going to have to rope in my fucking... 15 year old niece and nephews for there that you shit. go yeah I can how imagine. embarrassing is that now? <laughs> but they they are probably going to be but the they, best they, teachers uh, but they're the ones that are going to tell me quick and efficient that's there what I need quick and efficient 100% I'm not going to sit here and try and fucking learn it myself yeah Yeah. It's a long just time. tell me quickly how it works and they can and they and then, will and, and also can you just like do some posts for me yeah yeah <laughs> do it I'll pay you in love kisses yeah, and yeah, hugs yeah, yeah exactly because I'm your favourite tell your master. parents like you know to let you stay out for an hour exactly, longer, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's yeah, yeah. gonna be yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, babe, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you for today. And please uh, don't cancel me, guys. I haven't even started yet. You haven't said anything cancelable. Well, you never know, man. Nah, you haven't. You haven't. You're good. Okay. For this episode. For this one. <laughs> yeah. Let's see what happens next time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I get a bit like, overexcited, don't it? That is true, but it's always funny. I think because you humor is just your humor is so well placed. I think it's forgivable, but I say that. But, <laughs> I mean, we're definitely in big old 2023 where anything is possible. So, yo. I also did put in two disclaimers. So, yeah. Anyway, peace and love to you. Peace and love.
loves. Before we sign off, just a quick note to remind you that everything shared on this episode is based on personal research and personal experiences, lived experiences. I hope we were able to give you some food for thought, but please make sure you conduct your own research and speak to your healthcare professional if you have any questions or concerns. Okay, with love. Catch you on the next one.